Australian psychologist Stephen Bidolf has long been regarded as a sort of guru of the male liberation movement. In the 90s, his books on manhood and raising boys launched him onto the world stage. And now it seems he has a whole new generation of followers. Deborah Cornwall reports. What's a man now? What's a man mean? It started with group hugs and the wild men camps of the early 90s. Hello, Men's Helpline Dan speaking. How can I help you? Two decades on, one of the big daddies of men's liberation, Australian psychologist Stephen Bidoff, has declared the snag is dead. I, I went through a sensitive new man phase when I was, was a bit younger. It's, I've been successfully treated for that now. The new century has spawned a whole smorgasbord of man stylings and role models from celebrity metrosexuals to hands-on hipster dads. David Beckham. But masculinity experts say it's not all just bushy beards and man makeup. Men, or at least white middle-class men, really are rethinking the way they live. What has happened in the last two to three decades has been a, a fragmentation of that. Other kinds of ways of being a man in society have come forward. Um, it, f for example, it is not necessary now always to be the macho man. You can be a little more tender, you can be a little more caring. There's some really positive developments are happening. One, probably the biggest one is that young dads are, are hugely more involved with their children. This call to man up but nicely harks back to the mantra first championed by Stephen Biddeth. Men, he said, needed to become more emotionally literate if they wanted to live happy, satisfying lives. Alcoholism, suicide, marriage breakdown, um, poor parenting, violence, crime, pretty much everything that's going wrong in the world has got that male unhappiness behind it. Still in high demand on the international lecture circuit, Stephen Bidoff has recast himself for the new century, reaching out to a whole new generation of followers. But his message for men and their boy children remains much the same. If you have a boy in the 21st century, you're worried about him. And you have some reason to worry. When the industrial age forced men to work outside the home, he says, it came at a tremendous cost, leaving sons emotionally stunted by distant, absent fathering. Only about one man in ten is actually close to his own dad. There's this great wound between fathers and sons. There's another way to do this. Stephen Biddeff says teenage boys are still consistently being outperformed by girls at school, largely because they're missing out on the male mentoring they need to guide them into manhood and what he calls the masculine mode of teaching. And the Latin word for daffodils means testicles. <laughs> At the North Keylor Catholic Regional College in suburban Melbourne, teachers Brian Horan and Eamon Buckley are into their third year of their night or program for troubled or underperforming boys in year 10. We don't really necessarily see, see ourselves as, as um, bit off disciples, but, but, but what really does resonate with us is this idea that boys need to learn how to become a good man. Should sports people be role models? It's a debate for another time, yeah? The two teachers run most of the classes for the year, taking their relationships as confidants and mentors to the boys well beyond the schoolyard on call to students and parents virtually around the clock. It sounds a bit evangelical, but it really has made a huge change in the kids' lives. I got a name around the school for being a rat bag, but then Mr Horan and Mr Buckley made me want a class not to be a game anymore. They made me want to learn, they've improved my marks, maybe become a man. I always knew that I could achieve highly, but I always just sit at the back of the class, not worry about what was happening, misbehave and just not care what was happening around me. If it wasn't for this course, <coughs> I would have been closer to, like, drop out. At this stage, this is due in... Professor Raywin Connell says, while innovative programs like NITOR no doubt do get good results, the idea boys can only blossom under the guidance of men flies in the face of every major study on the learning styles of both sexes. 
It's not like, you know, some kind of secret torch which is passed down only from men to boys. Well, the main message from actual psychological research is about the psychological similarity between men and women, boys and girls. So when I asked it was Stephen Bidoff's prescription for underperforming boys that prompted the Howard government to spend millions on the nationwide Lighthouse School program for boys. But according to Professor Connell, it was ultimately shelved for want of results. I'm totally in favour of having more men in the teaching profession, but not in order to create segregated programs for boys. We need the men there for the girls as well. And you're also, I think, really underselling boys as learners. If you think boys only have one learning style or one narrow track on which they can learn, that is even a little bit insulting to boys. But Stephen Bidoff remains adamant that most men have not had the fathering they needed. Without some radical new approaches to how we raise boys, he says, men will continue to adopt what he calls the masks of manhood. Tough guy, that's always a good one. Or cool dude, and that mask will probably last three or four years into his marriage if he gets married. Or his wife doesn't like going to bed with a mask. His kids don't like having a mask at the breakfast table. Stephen Bidoff's take on the travails of men sort of has long been dismissed by gender experts as simplistic pop psychology. Masculinity, say the experts, has always been something of a stage act, shaped rather like fashion to the culture and the times men live in. The notion that somehow we can get behind the mask to the real uh, essence of the person behind it, I think is perhaps something of a wild goose chase. But the men's movement guru has always made a point of ignoring his critics. And after two decades in the field, younger men, he says, are at least making headway on the generations before them. There was this hunger for a, a guy that you could actually talk to and who could talk to the kids and, and was real. We've shifted from the, the, the 1950s man who was like a log of wood. Deborah Cornwall with that report. And